Okay, I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna show you a couple different sources here that I use to get all these measurements that I'm gonna, gonna show you here. The first one here is the Sasquatch Field Guide by Dr. Jeff Meldrum. And then here he shows he shows the, the um how to measure for the step the stride, the straddle, and the angle of the gate, which is also called the pitch. All right, so we're gonna get that. I'm gonna go through all this with you. This is a pretty good guide. It also goes over a lot of stuff with the mid-tarsal brakes, how to cast, cast the footprints, a lot of different stuff. So the Sasquatch Field Guide. And then I'll show you some other books too, some other stuff I'm using. Okay, so we're doing scientific measurements here. So all this, starting with the foot, you wanna measure the foot itself, the length of the foot, from the heel to the toe. And then you want to measure the foot at its widest part, which is usually up here around the, what, what I consider like the ball area of the foot. You want to measure the width. So the foot length and width is your first measurement. Okay, so I made some illustrations here to show. All right, so you want to measure for the step you're measuring from one hill to the next hill. And from one hill to the next hill. So it doesn't matter which foot. You can measure from the from the right hill to the left hill. Or from the left hill to the right hill. Either way. But you're measuring the step. Just from one hill to the next. So that's the step from the left heel to the right heel, or from the right heel to the left heel. Okay, and the measuring the stride is gonna be either from the, the left heel to the next left heel, or is either gonna be from the right heel to the next right heel. That's gonna be the stride. So th this is easy to get confused. A lot of people say, what was the stride? And they're thinking from one hill to the next hill. But that's actually the step. The stride, you want to measure from the same hill to the same hill. Like the left or the, or the right, same hill to same hill. The straddle, what you're measuring is from the edge of the left foot to the edge of the right foot. How far apart they are. So you can either take, you can take out on um, tape measure. And you can run it out. Along beside the foot. Along beside the feet like that. And then you can take another tape measure. And you can come over and measure from that tape measure to your next line and get your measurement. So like with the human, it's probably going to be um, two, three, four inches, something like that. And with the Bigfoot, it's going to be almost, almost zero and maybe even um, like an inch or two, depending on how they're walking, but it's just gonna be pretty close to, to zero. Okay, so for your straddle, you're measuring from the edge of one foot over to the edge of the other. So if you run your tape measure out, line them up, 
and then you take your another tape measure and measure that distance between the edge of that foot and the edge of this one. So that, that measurement is going to be your straddle. You're measuring from, from one line of the left foot to your line of the right foot. That's your straddle. Okay, so to get the angle of the gate or the pitch, which would be the pitch of the foot, I'm going to show you two different ways. Okay, so I've got the compass lined up. You can see my arrow. I'm not going by the needle. I'm going by the arrow. I've got it lined up with the north and with my, my arrow up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to put my center right here on our line of our heel. I've got a line going through the heel to the next heel. And then a line going through the center of the foot here. All right, so we're going to put our compass. Our compass center right here on the our line on the heel and I've got it lined up I've got it lined up here with our line so what I'm going to do is turn it to line up with our line going straight through the through the foot so you're going to line it up straight with the foot like that with your center center point right here on our, our lines at the heel and this is going to give you the degrees right here at the toes okay so what we're doing here and what with this I'm having to come backwards so there's 340 so we're we're probably a little over 345. So it's, it's looking like you can see where the the 350 is. So this is probably about a 12 degrees because you got 10 right there. This is about a 12 degree pitch. So we got a 12 degree pitch here on this. Or you can use a tape measure. Or you can use a tape measure and measure it right there at the toes and get your inches, however many inches it would end up being, to get your pitch of the foot or your or the angle of the gate. So this right here would be um, however many inches. So you're measuring right there at the at the toes from your your intersecting lines here for the foot. Going straight through the heels, and your line here going straight through the, the middle of the foot. So with the compass, you can get your degrees, or you can use a tape measure and get your inches, and that'll give you your angle of gait or your pitch of the foot. So here's each one, the foot length and width, the step, the stride, the straddle and the gate or the pitch. Okay, I want to show you a couple of books here. This book I got at one of the, I actually got this at the first Lakeland Bigfoot conference a couple of years ago. So I got this at the Bigfoot conference and this is where I got this is where I got this from that I showed you a few minutes ago about measuring the step, the stride, the straddle, and the, the pitch. So as you can see, I got quite a few bookmarks here. But some of these books like this can be, or can have a lot of information in them. Like these show you the, all the different names of the different Sasquatch or Bigfoot type beings that are around, like in Florida, showing a skunk ape. 
the Sasquatch. And then it's showing some of the other names around, Yeti, the Almas, the Yowie. So you can see here by this illustration, you can see the step, the stride, the straddle, the pitch, like I just illustrated. And the length and the width of the foot itself. And then I want to show you this book here. This book I bought at Bass Pro Shops a couple years back. This is a good book too for tracking. It shows you a lot of the animal tracks for North America. So this is a good book too to have. So it tells you all about the hooved animals, the deer, and uh, like here, we don't have elk or, or mule deer or um, moose here. But this tells you all about them, the range, and uh, the habitat, stuff like that. It does go in and show you footprints. It shows you the tracks, the footprints from them. And like here in Florida, we have the white white-tailed deer. I know they're all throughout the United States. But a book like this can teach you about the habitat, the animal's characteristics, the scat, stuff like that, tracks. It can teach you quite a bit what they eat. Look, here's some of the tracks it tells you about. And then there's a baby fawn. I figured you might like that. That's a baby fawn. I've seen them out in the wild several times with their mother. And it does have the wild hog or wild pig in it too. And we have a lot of them here in Florida. I know they're in some of the other states. They're heavily populated in Texas as well. But it goes into detail about a lot about them. It tells you a lot about the pod animals. Like here it talks about the canines. It tells you about the wolves, the coyotes, the foxes. We don't have wolves here in Florida. We used to have the, the red wolf, which there may still be some around. I think I found footprints from one a couple of years ago. But they supposedly went extinct. We supposedly killed them all out. So the coyote. They're all over Florida. We have a lot of them here in Florida. That's a pretty good picture of them right there. In a book like this too, it'll go into pretty good detail as far as tracks and, and the front foot and the rear foot. Again, this is the coyote. And then like this book, it just has the mountain lion. It doesn't actually specify the panther, the Florida panther. And it has the bobcat. We have a lot of them here in Florida as well. And the bobcat scat and the footprints. 
and I've found the bob, bobcat scat in footprints quite often and I've also found panther and panther scat several times out here in Florida and the, around the um, green swamp area. And of course the black bear. I think it's estimated we have over 4,000 black bears in Florida. And I have found their footprints and scat as well in our areas. And uh, something I didn't realize, but Smokey the Bear was actually a black bear. If you remember Smokey the Bear. I knew he was um, a bear, but I never really thought about him being a black bear. But it goes into detail about their scat. And about their footprints. This is good here because it shows you the paw. So this is a rear foot. Shows you the claws on it. The claws are not retractable like a cat. Shows you the front foot and the rear foot. And this book shows you a lot of the smaller animals like the raccoon. The fox, the rabbit, there's the raccoon footprints. It has a lot of the birds in it that we have here. The crows, the blue herons, sandhill crane, and it shows you all their footprints too. Some birds like the blue heron and it shows you their footprints. And again, I picked this up at Bass Pro Shops and uh, I believe it was the one in Tampa a couple of years back when we were there. It's a pretty good book to, to have to learn from. Okay, so again, Google is a good place to go to to search for some information for things like this. Now right here, they're, they're mixing up the step and the stride so they're calling this a stride when it's actually the step. They're calling this um, the, the stride, which is actually the step of a, for a human. I'm talking about a human step here. This is when I, when I look it up here and I'll show you. For a human, for my size, five foot nine, and I figured it out with this chart um, for centimeters and inches. I can take my height, put my height in in inches, and then it'll tell me how many centimeters that is. And then I can take in the, times that by the, the 0 0.015 for a mil, multiply it, multiply my centimeters of my height times the point, the 0 0.415 and it'll give me the centimeters that's my height in centimeters 72.7329 so that equals 28.6 so that's that's inches 28.6 so that should be my step length from one hill to the next hill should be my step length like from my left hill to my right hill or from my right hill to my left hill for my height so that should be on um, what it is so we'll um, test that out here shortly so you can look up um, stuff like the gate and uh, some of the stuff is actually kind of hard to find in here too looking up a pitch and a gate some a lot of it goes to roofing determining the pitch of a roof 
it's kind of hard to find the, uh, the actual footprints. Talking about footprints. And then here's some really good information on tracking. So I'll include, I'll include all these too in the links in the description. The links to these in the description. But this, um, this is really good here if you want to read this. It gives you a lot of information to learn about tracking. It tells you a lot about animals, about their trails, how they run, the escape routes that they use, the bedding down, dens, stuff like that. It, it teaches you a lot about tracking. So this is talking about skulls right here. This is talking about skulls. It talks a lot about tracks, measuring a track. Here again, we have the length of the track, the width of the track, the stride, the straddle, the pitch. So this also has a, um, I like this part right here, classification of the tracks, a clear print. Is we can you can see it real clearly like in the mud and then you have the pattern classification which is when it's not really clear when it's quite hard hard ground leafy ground stuff like that where you can't make out the toes really good or but you can see the good shape of it and the size that's considered a, a um, pattern classification versus a clear print. Clear prints are really hard to find. As you can see here, 5% of prints are going to be clear. 95% are going to be a, a pattern that you can find. So this has some good information like for the deer, looking at the tracks of a deer and being able to tell which one's a, a buck or which one's a doe. You can tell by the rear feet. The rear feet is going to be on the inside from the um, from the front feet for a male deer for a buck because of the different build of the body, and then the doe is going to be on the outside of the front feet because of the um, with them giving birth. And like right here, aging of the tracks. Because we've been out with um, quite a few people working with different teams and I'll find footprints sometimes that are two, three, four days old. Sometimes you can find them that have been rained in and you can definitely tell a difference. You can tell that they're not our footprints, our boot prints, and you can tell that they're older. And like right here, it's talking about using a tracking stick to be able to, to use for a measuring device from one footprint to the next for looking for prints. And that works um, pretty good as far as like for finding Bigfoot footprints, Sasquatch footprints. Because most of the time we find them between like 42 inch, 48 inch. Sometimes um, up to like 52 and 54 inches. So you pretty much want to look around 48 inches from one foot to the other. So when you find one footprint, if you look 48 inches, you're liable to find the next one or, um, or signs of the next one. It may not always be a perfect print. You may find signs of it where you can see it, some of it in the leaves or the dirt. And then find the next one by looking at for another 48 inches forward. And you can also backtrack and look for them. Look backwards behind the track. Look for another one. Go back and look for another one, another 48 inches. And then like some of the tracking, like the book and the paper that I showed you. Um, this will show you some of the 
like the two toes, like the hooved animals, or two toes, four toes, like the bobcat, the panther. And five toes, like the, the black bear, the raccoon, some of them. And then there's others here. So this is a good learning device, a good way of learning. So again, I'll put the link to this in the description. All right. It's about the same size. That one looks like at least 14 inches. They can be pretty hard to see sometimes. There's an area, quite a few animal tracks. This looks like raccoon, probably right here. You can see the horse, where the horse stuck. And then there's some smaller, smaller animals here too. Yeah, that's a raccoon there. This is more sugary sand, they're kind of hard to see sometimes. Yeah, the sand gets yeah. disturbed a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> And then like seeing the horse tracks and then you see the horse scat, horse poop, stuff like that. It gives you the uh, second confirmation of what you're seeing. Like seeing bobcat tracks and bobcat scat, coyote tracks, coyote scat. Gives you a confirmation of what you're seeing too. Yeah, Still listening to the birds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. go through it and dad like, oh, where did so-and-so go? We walk under it. <laughs> Where's so-and-so? <laughs> This right here, you can see this the deer been eating on this. All these out here, deer been eating on these. There's something else I'll look at too when I'm tracking. You look at what the animals are eating, signs of them. Like a hog track there and there. That's deer. That's a deer track right there. It's oh. fresh. Okay, well, that's raccoons out there. Yeah, that's it. raccoons. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty fresh deer track. Right there. And then the raccoon tracks. Raccoon. Raccoon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're trying. There's a lot of hog tracks here. And that one and some of these. They went down in the mud enough that they're catching the dew claws. The dew claws are showing in the track. So you got the hog track with the dew claws. Those over there. This is a hog waller here. 
and you got a lot of smaller hogs and walking around up here around it. There's some raccoon tracks here. Okay, I want to show y'all what I carry in my bag here, in my backpack, for doing the cast. So first of all, I'll spray it with the hairspray. So first of all, I'll spray it with the hairspray to help hold everything in place good and give it just a minute to dry. And then I use the plaster of Paris and I keep a mixing bowl. All this is is just the water. Just a gallon jug from, you can use it for water or tea or milk, something like that. Just a part of a gallon jug. It's really light, it's easy, easy to carry. And then um, I started making my own stir sticks and keeping a couple of them in my bag. That way I'm not having to look for small sticks to stir with. And then I've got marking tape and I've got some flags too. I can I can mark around my footprints if I need to so nobody steps on them. And then I'll start carrying a, one of these too. If it's got some water in the track, I can, I can suck some of the water out to try to get a better print and cast it. And then I'll always carry some bags. So. Once the footprint dries, the cast dries, I can, I can take it up and put it in a couple bags and bring it home. Alright, so we'll hit it with the hairspray first so I can set a couple minutes. I'll make up a little bit more and find a good hog track there too and pour it in. Maybe a raccoon track too. Yeah, a raccoon and a hog track maybe. Yeah. yeah, this one right here. Yeah, that's yeah, perfect. That yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, this one here. It's perfect for printing. Yeah, it's perfect. 
Yeah, it is. Dude, that's deep enough. That's really gonna turn out good. Yeah, it should look good. Yeah. I'll get this down. A oh, good idea. Just block it so anybody coming by won't, won't readily notice it. Yeah. But they won't be noticing a big white blob then. There you go. All right, thank you. Almost. Yeah, it's about two. Did you bring any casting stuff? Yeah. I think we ought to cast that one? It's about four and a half. Yeah, I think we should cast it. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, look at that, Tim. There's another one right here, too. Where you came out of the hole, it looks like. Yeah, it That's does. the same size. Yeah, yeah that looks like the same size. That's the yeah. same size. Yeah. And that's, look at that break. That's yeah. a tarpon break. That's right a metarsal, yeah, yeah. And I made me some sticks too for this, so that I'm not having to just uh, get dirty sticks and mix it. Let's see what I'm doing. I got this ready. Something just went from, I just, as I, as I turned my eyes, it kind of like went from one side to the other. It looked like back there. Yeah. Under What a unique spot for a plant. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. You know what? It almost looks... You know what, Tim? I think there's another one right here. <laughs> I think there's another one side by side mm -hmm. next to it. It looks... See it? I wonder if it just stood in the hole like that. It almost looks it like... It could have. Yeah. I see, I see a shape there. Yeah. 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 It's a heel back here. Yeah. Same size. It, yeah. It looks like it just stood in the hole. Yeah. He may have just stood there. Yeah. Because this is a right foot, yeah, and that's a left. Yeah, that's what he that's did. What it he like, stood yeah. in the freaking hole. Yeah, wish I would have noticed that a minute ago. Could have had a unique print, had a double. So that would make sense too, then, because that to me looked like a left foot. 
Yeah. So he would have stepped over. Stepped over with his left foot. Yeah. With that foot going yep. more weight on that foot. Damn it, I wish I'd noticed that. We could have had a mm -hmm. unique cast right there. Yeah. Had a double footprint on one. Yeah. That would be unique. Mm hmm. That other one's not as good, but. No, it's that's, not. That's no. pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, that is, yeah. You know, literally, that's where I pulled the freaking plant out of the ground. Yeah. So it tells you how much they walk, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it sure does. They're like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. I told them, I said, I'm just taking a couple plants, just because I want my yard to be as pretty as yours. Yeah. Yeah, so if he stood there with both feet, put all his weight on the right foot, yep. and stepped over here and hit right there with that's his left it. foot. It, you're, you're exactly right, because yeah. th that one went in deeper. Like. Yeah. He went in deeper. And he, so yeah. what is that step from there to there? Guessing around 34 inches, 35. Oh, shit. Just estimating about where the, because uh, you can't really see his heel here. It looks like his toes and the ball of his foot hit right there. You want to move forward? Yeah, I'm ready. I want to go back here where that, where this tree was and where that other one flipped over. Okay. I mean, Think about how hard it would be to get this tree into this spot. Yeah, that is, yeah. Look at this part. Damn, man. Right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the another, light's helping set it off. Another really good one. Yeah, the light's hitting it perfect. Yeah, they looks like the same one, same size. Looks like he might have stepped right here. Because that looks like a left foot. So you got a left, a right right here, and then a left right there. Yeah, as he came out, yeah. his heel yeah. going that way. Yeah, at first I thought it was toes at first, but no, it's not. It is, you're right. It's yeah, heel. It's just going that way. It's yeah. his heel. Yeah, same width. Right. Yeah. Yeah, same size. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. There. Yeah, because that's a footprint right there. That's all mashed down. Okay, I want to show you all these casts. We, we got them back from Mike Aguilar. These are the ones that me and Mike casted out there in his area. Just want to show you the depth, how deep these were down in the mud. This is the eight inch, eight inch footprint. So this would have been the toes up here. And then the mid tarsal break. The heel came down in here. So this is about an eight inch footprint. This was the smaller one that I casted that day. Mike put these on the board here. So these are the two that me and Mike casted. The uh, the one that Mike casted that day was this one here, the one on the left, and the one I casted was here on the on the right. So you can see you can definitely see where the mid tarsal break is here. And these were in a lot of leafy, muddy areas. So you can see a lot of the leaves and stuff still on it on these and you got a lot of places where all the leaves and stuff were were all embedded in it there so you don't get all the um like dermal ridges and stuff like that out of areas like this it was just too too leafy and muddy it wasn't like a good clear sandy mud where you get a a real good track but these will really show you on um, some of the stuff we're finding here you can see the there were the toes. This was the big toe here, and the toes come around. But you can see it's a footprint. And then 
tune. I want to turn it this way too. So you can see. You can see especially this one too. This one was deep in the mud. And us walking through there, we were not leaving tracks like that. Not that deep in the mud. These were heavy. Okay, so I'm going to walk through here and, and then I'm going to measure my footsteps and stuff and show you, like out here in the field, show you what it looks like measuring these footprints. Just using my own. So I'll just break this area out so I can clear it out. All right, so. Okay, so. <coughs> That's not too bad. You can see my footprint's pretty good there. Okay, so. So one thing you want to do, the first thing you want to do is measure the total footprint. So I'm measuring from the tip of the foot to the heel. So my boots are down like 12 and a quarter inches. And then you want to measure the widest part of the foot which is usually up here towards the heel. So I've got four and a half. So I'm at 12 and a quarter and four and a half so that's your your width and your that's your length and your width of your foot okay so then next you want to measure from one hill to the next so that's from right here that hill to this hill so i've got 25 inches so i've got a 25 inch step so what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll measure from hill to hill. Okay, so I've got 25 inches so it's staying consistent. And then from hill to hill, I'm staying consistent, 25 inches. Alright, so that's the measuring the foot itself, the measuring the step. Now we're going to measure the stride. The stride. <clears throat> it's from the left hill to the left hill, or the right hill to the right hill. Okay, so I've got a 49 inch, a 49 inch stride. Okay, that's left hill to left hill, right hill to right hill. I've got a 49 inch stride. Okay, so that's the stride. Okay, and then we're going to measure the straddle. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to put that at the edge of my foot. So that's at the edge of my footprints. About the same thing here. So I've got a four and a quarter inch stride, or straddle, I mean, straddle. So let's see if it stays pretty consistent. Okay, I measured that on the wrong side. Okay, so I've got a five and a half inch straddle.
Okay, and then we're going to measure the, the pitch. Okay, the pitch I'm going through that foot, right through the middle of that foot from the hill. And then from that center of that hill, and centered it up on that foot down there, on that hill. So I've got a three and a quarter, about a three and a quarter inch pitch or gate, angle of gate. And also with that you can use the, again you can use the compass. Okay, so lining the compass up like I did on the paper. So then when I turn it, I'm keeping about the center of my compass and then following my arrows. So I've got about a 10 degrees, I've got a 10 degree pitch or 10 degree angle of gate. All right, so I wanted to give you a show you how that worked in the field, how to do that. So now I want to show you one more thing and I'll show you the picture of this too. <clears throat> but in this picture you can see one's foot right here. Okay, and how they walk straight in line. But what they do is they swing their foot around, and this one, the foot's like back here. So see, here's that foot. They swing their foot around over here, and then this foot here come around and swing over here. I'm just going to try to make them deeper so you can see them good. Alright, so here's this photo I was talking about, and these are the six inch footprints. So you can see the right foot, then the left foot, and the right foot. So you can see how far over the, the left foot swings over where it's not even in line. So you can see with my line I drew on the edge of the right foot. So with the person, this foot would be over here. So with the big foot, normally you would have somewhere around right here. But I think because of the way they swing their feet over, he actually, he came over further than being in line. So as you can see, this is similar to that picture. Where you can see this is the edge of my right foot, which would match up with the edge of his right foot, and then his left foot <coughs> is not over here. His left foot's not over here where humans would be, and it's not straight in line either. His is like a minus pitch. Not a minus pitch, but a minus straddle. His is a minus straddle. Or if you measured his straddle, I'm just using this as an example. 
but I've got about five inches there. So his would be like a five inch minus straddle instead of a five inch straddle or a one inch straddle or one degree. So I'm going to show this to you also. Alright, so that's my field. What I wanted to show you as far as doing this in the field. Alright, thank you babe for filming.